When someone says the words artificial intelligence, one of two things come to mind for many people. An evil sentient computer that is seeking to bring about the end of humanity, a la Skynet from the Terminator, or much less dramatically, the AI in video games that results in your computer controlled friends, or as I call them frenemies, running out into the open on an escort mission, pushing you out of cover, or just running endlessly into a solid wall. But the reality of how true artificial intelligence is used by organizations is really quite different. You see, although the way AI works is only loosely modeled on the human brain, it's somewhat similar in that computerized neural networks are general purpose tools that can actually be trained to perform a huge variety of tasks. You can learn more about exactly how neural networks work up here, but the gist of it is that information is passed through processing nodes according to how each node weights that incoming information. Once the information finally gets to the end of the network, the output node that it hits reflects how exactly the network recognized it. So for example, if you're trying to train a neural network to tell different animals apart, one output node might correspond to a whale, while another might correspond to a, a dingo or something. Then, as training occurs, programmers can adjust the weights of the nodes, often automatically with algorithms, so that eventually the network will consistently get the correct results, making them very customizable. That is, as long as there's enough parallel processing power and throughput available to handle tons of inputs at once. Not only is AI-based image recognition useful for simple tasks like finding cute animal photos on Google image search or snapping a pic of something and doing automatic comparison shopping, companies also use it for more complicated applications. In fact, it's already being used to check for defects on assembly lines without needing specific programming, as well as to look at things like x-rays and MRIs in the medical field to pick out injuries to help human physicians double check their opinions. Then, on the subject of injuries, how about preventing them in the first place? The built-in AI in self-driving cars is heavily trained to recognize pedestrians by being shown thousands upon thousands of images of people crossing the street. So the car will know to stop instead of plowing through an intersection like Lloyd Christmas. You can actually learn more about how self-driving cars work right up here. But aside from image recognition, large financial firms are now using AI to analyze the market and figure out how to invest. This can take on many forms, but some of these implementations will do things like keep an eye on recent news stories and what's being discussed on social media to determine how world events might impact the market and then make recommendations accordingly. Additionally, AI has already been helping these firms with high frequency trading where neural networks can quickly make decisions and automatically trade millions of times per day so that the humans can, I don't know, focus on their water cooler chatter? Speaking of money, for better or for worse, AI has become a powerful tool for marketers. It's already being used to keep tabs on foot traffic in brick and mortar stores and determine what drives the most consumer interest, as well as to gather data on consumers to figure out how to retain them if they're thinking about switching to a competitor. This is usually done by offering strategic, targeted discounts or other offers. Also, if you've done any job hunting recently, there might be more to why you didn't get a call back than just those embarrassing pictures on social media. Some HR departments are now using AIs that can learn what things on a resume will end up being the best match for a certain position and then auto scanning them before they ever even wind up on a recruiter's desk. <sighs> on a more positive note for Poor Joshua, who didn't get that position he really wanted. The fact that AIs don't have to be specifically programmed and can instead learn on the fly is a huge plus for your cybersecurity. Personnel in charge of security can now deploy a trained neural network that can detect suspicious activity and then shut it down without constantly needing new definition updates and patches. So that's cool, Josh, for when you're sitting at home on your computer instead of at work. And the ability of an AI to learn has even led to AI-produced music. 
Some major artists have already used AI to keep tabs on musical themes being discussed on social media and then come up with a song that fits those trends, but it even goes further than that with entire albums having been completely produced by an AI with no human intervention. Though it might not be surprising that one such classical album was described as cold and chilling. Now, given enough time, we do expect both the programming and the power of these neural networks to improve and unlock even more exciting capabilities. The thing we don't know is quite when they'll begin to understand love and compose slightly warmer music. Today's video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. PIA supports a variety of VPN protocols and types of encryption and authentication, which allows you to dial in the exact level of privacy protection that you need. They've got apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome, and you can connect up to five devices at the same time with a single account. Their apps include DNS leak protection and IPv6 leak protection, and they've got an internet kill switch that'll block all traffic if the VPN becomes disconnected unexpectedly. Check it out today at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell and follow and all of that good stuff. It's not really forgetting anymore at this point. I tell them all the time. It's just obstinance.